Hi guys. A uh, beautiful day today in Texas. And uh, G-Man, thank you very much for that video. Uh, reminding me of all of you wonderful people out there. I really, 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 really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, you're right. It was a couple of people uh, saying bad things, but that doesn't even hold a candle to all of the rest of you. And that was my bad for giving them a lot more weight than they deserved um, probably because they were struggling with their own issues and uh, yeah I'm talking to people who are having issues so of course I'm gonna have ones that were in a bad mood and say mean things of course I am so yeah I need to get over it and you're right I don't pay much attention to um, how many videos I put up and I looked and I think it's 250 250 videos Wow, that's a lot of videos, especially, and I looked, and basically I started May. So, yeah, that's a lot of videos, and I hadn't even realized that I'd put out that much. So, anyway, let's get back to it. So, I got to thinking um, about a couple of things. So, first thing that I want to talk about is, um, I want to go over this a little bit more about talking to your dead loved ones. And mainly because I think this is really important that you guys realize this. And uh, I think most of you have people that have died that you cared about. And I, I do want to go over the fact that the place that they are now is wonderful. It is so, so wonderful. And I know that you miss them terribly. And I know it's difficult. But... Uh, I remember so clearly whenever I was dead that anytime anyone even started to think about me I was standing next to them and because I was outside of time space I could do that and everything else at once and again I can't explain that to you but I want to assure you that to me I was in this body standing right next to the person right in front of the person sometimes right in front of them and answering the call now I was what 45 ish uh, then <clears throat> maybe 47 48 anyway something like that so I was younger than what was expected and it was funny because I raised my kids to never put me on a machine any kind of machine but we didn't really cover me being in the 40s and Stephanie told me later she said well mom I, I didn't know if there was a uh, an age that I was supposed to start that at. So I remember waking up the first time and both of the kids were plastered on the wall. I don't know if I've said this in a previous video. And they looked scared to death. And of course, when I woke up, I had no idea that I had been in a coma for almost a month. So I had no idea what they were uh, scared about. And then I went out again. And of course, later on, I talked to them and they were both petrified because... By then, they had been told, uh, whenever the, the, the doctors first told them, ask them about putting me on the machines, because they ended up putting me on every machine known to medical science to keep me alive. And the doctors told them at the time that I would be fine. If they did that and saved my life, I'd be fine. Well, by, by the end of it, the doctors told them that uh, I wouldn't be able to walk again. I would probably uh, not have my faculties... You know, I, I would probably not be able to think straight or speak or walk. So that's the information that they had when I woke up. <laughs> so they were really, really, really scared because they know that I'm really active and to not be able to be active would be very, very difficult for me. So they were very scared. So, yeah, I got off off on that one on side side note. So back to me being dead. So when I was dead and people would think about me and I would be standing in front of them and I remember standing in front of them and going, you called, you know, basically you called, I'm here. Uh, what do you need? And almost all of them were crying uh, or they had tears in their eyes. And I was like, well, what are you upset about? Why are you upset? And I knew that they had something to say to me. I could feel that they had something to say to me. 
and it took me a split second, even though I was outside of time and space, da da da, to realize that they couldn't see me, that they couldn't see me, but vibrationally, I was very close to them vibrationally, and certainly, um, I was close enough that if the belief system hadn't been in place, that they could have altered their vision and seen me. So I tell you this because I want you to know how close your loved ones truly are. And I know a lot of people have told me um, of things like one person, uh, they, they used to find pennies or coins uh, all the time. And every time they did, they thought of their, I think it was their father. And uh, some people can feel their touch, can feel a touch on them. Yeah. And breath or the smell of them, especially with younger people, you can smell them. And all of these things are very true. But I want you all to know that when you think of your loved one who has passed to another vibration, and actually that's pretty accurate, that's a good term, that they've passed, because they've passed from one vibration to another, that they really are very, very close to you. So I want you to, to know that and hear that from me, that the place that they have gone to is beyond anything you could possibly dream up, anything that you could possibly dream up. And all of them, anyone that you care that deeply about, they're one of your close friends. You came into this with them. Uh, they are with you still. This whole game that you came to play, uh, for whatever reason that was or is, or all of the reasons, really, because there's a lot of reasons, that they were a part of that too. That they um, designed it, came up with it, uh, approved of it just like you did and they did it with you you were together and they're still with you anyone that you feel very 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 close to they're still with you and they always will be with you frequently they become what a lot of people call guardian angels uh, although I, I don't like that term angels because it it takes on a vibrational meaning of something that's kind of separate from what we ourselves are but they do become like that they're part of what i call my pub friends they become a part of that anyone that passes that you're that close to that you feel that um that kind of loss whenever they're gone they become a part of your pub friends and they're there to help you all you have to do is ask and they will help you. And just like your pub friends, um, think of it like you do classically. You would have classically called on God or prayed to God to answer your prayers. Well, think of it in terms of uh, your pub friends will help you solve that problem. So you can seriously ask whatever question you want to ask. Like, okay, what? Well, Okay, let's do a simple one. Like, uh, you're in between jobs, you're out looking for a job, and you've, you've narrowed it down to like three different jobs. And you really don't know which job will be the best for you. So what you can do is you can go into a meditative state, and you can ask um, their opinion on which job is better for you and be sure and say explain or vibrationally feel what you your what you li would like your life to look like in say a year into this job and you want to find the job that will help you get or be or have the environment that you want to have and if you do that there will be an instinctual knowing or, and if you don't get that instinctual knowing, even if you do, there will also be hints. Like, have you seen those movies where, um, where there'll be little hints on signs? There was a, there was a movie, I can't remember the name of it, and somebody was asking for a, a sign from God, and God was answering in these signs, and the sign said, God speaks, blah, blah, blah. And there'll be little hints like that that will 
trigger you to know which job to take and that's their way of, of telling you and there's all different kinds of ways that that can work it's really um, really more a you thing it's very individual to you stuff that you would understand and it would make sense to you but you alone based on your history and your belief systems but they will answer they will help you they really will and that comes to all kinds of things whether it's uh, where you should go on vacation, who you should marry, uh, whether or not you should have a child or not, you know, down to, well, really, what outfit you want to wear for the day. I mean, really, anything can be assisted. They will help you with anything. But I guarantee you, anyone that you feel very, very strongly about their death and miss them a great, great deal, I guarantee you, they are now a member of your uh, pub friends. And since they have been on the planet, since they have been in human form, they actually have a better chance of communicating with you. Uh, and, but they're on the other side, so they have all the answers. So they are really, really good ones to talk to about um, any questions that you might have, any support you might need. So also, they're really good if you feel alone. Uh, you can call on them. And you have a choice at that minute, that second. You can either feel more alone because they're gone, or you can feel for them and you will never feel alone again because the friends that you had, the loved ones that you had, you probably went to a different house. You might have lived in a different city. Uh, you might have lived in a, in a different country. And now they're with you all the time. 24-7 uh, they're with you now. So I, I just wanted to give you all some more uh, positive feedback for anyone who has lo lost someone that they were very, very, very close to. They have not gone anywhere. They're, they're still right there with you guys. And if you will just uh, allow yourself to be open to it and to, to kind of uh, get past the suffering and allow yourself to be happy, I would say probably the best way of doing that is going to be to remember uh, happy times that you had together. If they were very, very close to you, whenever you remember the happy moments that you had, uh, I don't think that you can help but smile or laugh or be happy in that moment. And that's when you're really, really, really uh, capable of, of interacting with them of hearing them if you put it down if you if you really start believing in it and really start going into a neutral meditative state uh eventually if you keep practicing this you actually have can have uh telepathic conversations back and forth okay uh you can do it just like the psychics can do it because the psychics any kind of psychic ability is your ability too. We all have those, all of those abilities and so much more. And as you're heading to 5D, once you get to 5D in the mid range and step out of time space, you will see them again. They will be there at that point again. Uh, if you can lose the belief system on time space, you could actually see them sooner, but you certainly will be able to see them again. In, once you step outside of time space okay well hopefully that will help uh, that is my goal anyway is to help people that are suffering because of a loss of someone that they miss terribly uh, I just want to encourage you to open yourself up to it and uh, they're there and they'll give you a great big giant hug and help you with anything that you want help with and support you anyway that you will allow them to just ask okay all right well huge hugs from someone on this planet who loves you very 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 much and thank you g-man for reminding me um, to not concentrate on those uh, negative people uh, and to remember all of you guys out there and uh, yeah I guess I didn't realize that I had 450 people subscribing now and like you said, uh, I do visualize that room. I remember talking to you guys in a diff different video, and I think there were 60 people. 
that were watching my videos and I could see 60 people. And for me, uh, 450, mind boggling, mind boggling. Um, I'm glad that you guys feel, I hope you feel the love that I have for each and every one of you because I do. Um, and I do do these videos because I do want to help. And I am glad that it has helped um, you guys. Really, I'm glad. And I can't wait to meet everybody in a couple months. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very close now, right? <laughs> also, I, I think I almost have a, a patron that supports me. And uh, uh, for all of you that have donated, thank you so much. It is so, so appreciated. Uh, you have no idea how much it's appreciated. And um, Michelle, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Love, I just feel like you're kind of my right next to me here. Uh, it's very, very sweet. So thank you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sending the love. And uh, yeah, I've got to remind myself to look at that and not the negative, right? Just like I tell you guys, right? <laughs> okay. Huge chugs. <clears throat> Huge chugs. I love you so, so much. And I'll talk to you later. Bye now.